Jack Miller, a seasoned space explorer, had seen many strange things in his travels, but nothing quite like the creature he encountered on the planet Draxia. Draxia was a lush, vibrant world, home to an array of exotic wildlife, but none more curious than the alien pet that Jack discovered in the dense jungle. The creature was called a Zarnak, and it was infamous among the local settlers and spacefarers for its fearsome appearance and rumored dangerous nature. Standing at nearly six feet tall, the Zarnak had sleek, midnight blue fur, glowing red eyes, and a set of sharp, retractable claws. Its presence alone was enough to send most people running in fear. Jack, however, was different. When he first stumbled upon the Zarnak, he was captivated by its beauty and grace, rather than terrified by its menacing appearance. The creature seemed to sense his lack of fear and responded with curiosity rather than aggression. Easy there, Jack said softly, extending a hand. To his surprise, the Zarnak approached him cautiously, sniffing his hand before nuzzling against it. Jack chuckled. Well, aren't you a friendly one? The bond between Jack and the Zarnak grew quickly. He named her Zara, and soon she became his constant companion. Despite her fearsome reputation, Zara was gentle and affectionate with Jack, following him everywhere and showing a level of loyalty and devotion that he had never experienced before. Jack marveled at how intelligent and responsive Zara was. She seemed to understand his words and emotions, reacting with surprising empathy. Over time, Zara began to exhibit behaviors that Jack interpreted as protectiveness and affection. She would growl softly if anyone approached too quickly and nuzzled Jack whenever he seemed upset. Jack's fellow settlers on Draxia, however, were not as enamored with Zara. The sight of the imposing Zarnak walking through the settlement alongside Jack often led to whispers and fearful glances. Many believed that the Zarnak was a dangerous beast that would turn on Jack at any moment. One evening, as Jack and Zara were walking through the market, a group of settlers confronted them. Hey, Jack, one of them called out. You really think it's safe to have that monster around here? What if it attacks someone? Jack sighed, stroking Zara's fur to calm her. Zara's not a monster. She's as gentle as a lamb. There's nothing to be afraid of. The settler scoffed. That's easy for you to say. But what happens when it decides it doesn't like someone? We can't risk it. Before Jack could respond, Zara growled softly, sensing the tension. The settlers stepped back, their fear evident. Jack knew he had to find a way to prove that Zara was not a threat. Determined to show everyone that Zara was harmless, Jack decided to demonstrate her gentle nature. He arranged a gathering in the central square, inviting everyone to come and see for themselves. He spent the next few days training Zara to perform simple, non-threatening tricks, hoping to change the settlers' minds. On the day of the demonstration, the square was filled with curious onlookers. Jack stood with Zara at his side, addressing the crowd. I know many of you are afraid of Zara, but I want to show you that she's not dangerous. She's intelligent, loyal, and loving. Please, give her a chance. Jack began the demonstration, guiding Zara through the tricks they had practiced. She responded perfectly, performing each task with grace and precision. The crowd watched in awe as Zara fetched objects, responded to commands, and even performed a playful dance. As the demonstration came to an end, the settlers began to murmur among themselves. Some were still skeptical, but many were impressed by Zara's intelligence and Jack's control over her. A few brave souls even approached to pet Zara, finding her fur soft and her demeanor calm. Despite the success of the demonstration, not everyone was convinced. A faction within the settlement, led by a man named Garrett, remained staunchly opposed to the presence of the Zarnak. They saw Zara as a threat to their safety and were determined to have her removed. Garrett confronted Jack one evening as he was leaving the market. Jack, this has gone on long enough. That creature doesn't belong here. It's only a matter of time before something goes wrong. Jack stood his ground, his expression resolute. Zara has done nothing to harm anyone. She's part of my family, and I'm not going to abandon her because of unfounded fears. Garrett scowled. You're putting everyone at risk. If you won't get rid of it, we'll have to take matters into our own hands. That night, Jack couldn't shake the feeling of impending trouble. He kept Zara close, making sure she was safe and secure. Despite his efforts to integrate her into the community, he knew that fear and prejudice could be powerful motivators for those unwilling to change their views. Determined to find a solution, Jack sought the advice of his friend, Dr. Anna Lee, a xenobiologist who had studied Zarnax extensively. Anna had always been supportive of Jack and Zara, 
believing that the Zarnak was misunderstood. Anna, I need your help, Jack said, meeting her in her lab. There are still people who want Zara gone. How can I convince them she's not a threat? Anna thought for a moment before replying. Education and transparency are key. People fear what they don't understand. We need to provide them with more information about Zarnak's, their behavior, and their nature. Maybe a public seminar or a series of educational sessions could help. Jack nodded, feeling a surge of hope. That's a great idea. If we can help people understand Zara, maybe they'll start to see her the way I do. They quickly organized a series of educational sessions, inviting settlers to learn about Zarnak's. Anna presented her research, explaining the biology, behavior, and social structure of Zarnak's. She highlighted their intelligence, loyalty, and potential for forming deep bonds with humans. Jack shared his personal experiences with Zara, recounting stories of her protectiveness, gentleness, and affection. He showed videos of Zara interacting with him and performing the tricks they had practiced, emphasizing her harmless nature. The sessions were met with mixed reactions. Some settlers were genuinely interested and began to see Zara in a new light. Others remained skeptical, their fear and prejudice too deeply ingrained to be easily swayed. One evening after an educational session, Jack and Anna were approached by a young woman named Lily. She looked nervous but determined. Mr. Jack, Dr. Lee, I, I want to help. I think Zara is amazing, and I want to learn more about her. Maybe if more people see that she's not dangerous, they'll change their minds too. Jack smiled warmly. Thank you, Lily. Your support means a lot. Every person who understands Zara better is a step towards acceptance. As more settlers began to interact with Zara and learn about Zarnax, the tide of fear slowly started to turn. Zara's gentle nature and the efforts of Jack, Anna, and their growing group of supporters gradually chipped away at the prejudice that had surrounded her. But Garrett and his faction were not easily deterred. They continued to spread fear and misinformation, determined to remove Zara from the settlement. Jack knew that changing deeply held beliefs would take time and patience, but he was committed to fighting for Zara and their future together. One evening, as Jack sat with Zara in their small home, he reflected on their journey. We've come a long way, Zara. There are still challenges ahead, but we'll face them together. You're not just a pet to me, you're family, and I'll do whatever it takes to keep you safe. Zara nuzzled Jack's hand her eyes filled with trust and affection. Jack felt a renewed sense of determination, knowing that their bond was unbreakable. Together, they would continue to navigate the challenges of fear and prejudice, striving to create a world where Zara could live freely and be accepted for who she truly was. The demonstration and educational sessions had begun to shift some opinions, but the process of gaining full acceptance for Zara was slow. Jack continued to engage with the community, encouraging interactions with Zara and sharing more about her species. He wanted people to see what he saw in Zara, a gentle, loyal, and intelligent creature. One day, while Jack was repairing a piece of equipment at the market, Lily approached him with a broad smile. Mr. Jack, my friends want to meet Zara. They've heard so much about her and are curious. Jack's heart lifted. Of course, Lily. I'll bring her by this afternoon. True to his word, Jack brought Zara to the market square. A group of children and a few adults gathered around, watching with a mix of curiosity and trepidation. Lily stepped forward and petted Zara, showing the others that there was nothing to fear. See? She's really friendly, Lily said, her voice filled with excitement. Encouraged by Lily's example, more children and even some adults approached Zara, tentatively at first, but gradually with more confidence. Zara, sensing their caution, responded with her usual gentle demeanor, nuzzling their hands and letting them stroke her sleek fur. As the interactions continued, a man named Tom, one of the more skeptical settlers, watched closely. After some time, he approached Jack. You know, I never thought I'd see the day. Maybe I was wrong about Zara. Jack smiled, relief washing over him. I'm glad to hear that, Tom. She's really special. I hope more people will come to see that. The tide was indeed turning. More settlers began to accept Zara, and her presence became a less contentious issue. Jack continued to work with Dr. Anna Lee to educate the community, organizing more events and fostering positive interactions, but Jack remained vigilant, knowing that not everyone was convinced. Garrett and his faction still posed a threat, and Jack was determined to protect Zara from any harm. 
Despite the growing acceptance, not everyone was convinced. Garrett and his faction were still determined to see Zara removed from the settlement. They believed she was a danger, and no amount of education or demonstration would change their minds. One evening, as Jack and Zara were returning home from a day at the market, Garrett and a few of his supporters confronted them in a narrow alley. We've had enough, Jack, Garrett said, his voice low and menacing. That creature is a threat to our community, and we're not going to let you endanger us any longer. Jack stood his ground, his heart pounding. Zara has never hurt anyone. She's not a threat. You're letting your fear control you. Garrett sneered. You don't know what you're talking about. We won't let you put us all at risk. If you won't get rid of that thing, we will. Before Jack could react, Garrett lunged at Zara with a stun stick. Zara, sensing the threat, growled and backed away, but Jack stepped in between them. Leave her alone, he shouted. Garrett's supporters hesitated, seeing the determination in Jack's eyes. The standoff was tense, but eventually Garrett lowered the stun stick. This isn't over, Jack, he warned. We'll do whatever it takes to protect our community. As Garrett and his group walked away, Jack felt a mix of anger and fear. He knew they were serious about their threats, and he needed to find a way to protect Zara. Determined to keep Zara safe, Jack sought the advice of Dr. Anna Lee and the settlement's council. He proposed creating a secure habitat for Zara on the outskirts of the settlement, where she could live freely without posing a perceived threat to anyone. Anna supported the idea. It's a good compromise, Jack. Zara will have a safe place to live, and the settlers will see that you're taking their concerns seriously. The council agreed, and plans were made to build the habitat. Jack and Anna worked tirelessly, enlisting the help of settlers who had come to support Zara. The habitat was designed to mimic Zara's natural environment, providing her with plenty of space to roam and play. When the habitat was finally completed, Jack led Zara to her new home. She explored the area with curiosity and excitement, her eyes glowing with contentment. Jack felt a sense of relief, knowing that Zara would be safe here. That evening, as Jack sat with Zara in her new habitat, he reflected on their journey. They had faced many challenges, but their bond had only grown stronger. We'll get through this, Zara he said softly. No matter what, we'll always have each other. Zara nuzzled Jack's hand, her eyes filled with trust and affection. Jack knew that their fight for acceptance wasn't over, but he was determined to protect Zara and show the community that fear could be overcome with understanding and love. Despite Jack's efforts to create a safe habitat for Zara, tensions within the settlement remained high. Garrett and his faction were not satisfied and continued to spread fear and misinformation about Zara insisting that she was still a threat. One afternoon, while Jack was at work in the market, a group of children wandered near Zara's habitat. They were curious and wanted to see the creature that Jack had spoken so fondly about. Unbeknownst to them, a nest of wild draklings, small but aggressive creatures, was nearby. As the children played, they inadvertently disturbed the nest, prompting the draklings to attack. Zara, sensing the danger, reacted instinctively. She leaped over the fence of her habitat and charged at the draklings, placing herself between the children and the threat. With a fierce growl, she managed to scare off the draklings, but not before one of the children was scratched in the chaos. The settlers rushed to the scene, finding Zara standing protectively over the frightened children. The injured child's parents arrived, panic-stricken and misunderstanding the situation. That beast attacked my child, the father shouted, pulling his daughter away. Jack, hearing the commotion, ran to the habitat and quickly assessed the situation. Zara didn't attack anyone, he explained urgently. She was protecting the children from the draklings. She saved them. But the parents and some of the other settlers were not convinced. Fear and anger spread through the crowd, and Garrett seized the moment to rally his faction. This is exactly what we've been warning about, he shouted. That creature is a menace. We need to get rid of it before someone else gets hurt. The Council of Settlers convened an emergency meeting to address the incident. Emotions were running high, and the atmosphere was charged with tension. Jack stood before the council, Zara by his side as he pleaded his case. Zara was protecting the children, Jack insisted. She would never harm anyone. If it weren't for her, those kids might not be alive right now. Garrett, leading the opposition, was unmoved. This is exactly why we can't have that beast around. It's only a matter of time before something worse happens. We need to remove the threat now. The council deliberated for hours, weighing the evidence and listening to testimonies from both sides. 
Some settlers spoke in Zara's defense, recounting their positive experiences and vouching for her gentle nature. Others, influenced by fear and Garrett's rhetoric, argued for her removal. Finally, the council reached a decision. The head of the council, an elderly woman named Marin, addressed Jack with a heavy heart. Jack, we recognize that Zara has shown remarkable loyalty and has protected us. However, the fear and division she has caused cannot be ignored. We must prioritize the safety and unity of our community. You have one week to find a new home for Zara. Jack felt a mixture of relief and despair. While he was grateful that Zara's life was spared, the thought of losing her was unbearable. He knew he had to act quickly to find a solution that would keep them together. Determined to find a safe place for Zara, Jack reached out to his network of contacts across the galaxy. He contacted old friends, fellow explorers, and anyone who might have a solution. Days passed with little success, and the deadline loomed ever closer. One evening, as Jack sat with Zara in their small home, a message came through on his communicator. It was from an old friend, Captain Elias, who commanded a research vessel studying exotic wildlife on remote planets. Jack, I heard about your situation, Elias said. There's a sanctuary on the planet Verdantia, a place dedicated to protecting rare and endangered species. It might be the perfect place for Zara. The staff there are experienced and would ensure her safety. Jack felt a glimmer of hope. Thank you, Elias. I'll contact them right away. He reached out to the sanctuary on Verdantia and spoke with Dr. Celine, the head of the facility. She was intrigued by Zara's story and agreed to take her in, provided they could safely transport her to the sanctuary. With a plan in place, Jack prepared for the journey to Verdantia. He secured a small transport ship and made the necessary arrangements for Zara's safe travel. The settlers, though relieved to see Zara go, helped Jack with the preparations, some expressing regret and wishing him well. On the day of departure, a small crowd gathered to see them off. Jack felt a mix of sadness and determination as he looked at the faces of the settlers, some of whom had come to accept Zara. Take care, Jack, Lily's father said, extending a hand. Thank you for everything you've done. I'm sorry it had to end this way. Jack nodded, shaking his hand. Thank you. I hope one day you'll see that Zara was never a threat. As they boarded the ship, Zara looked back at the settlement one last time. Jack could sense her confusion and sorrow, but he reassured her. It's going to be all right, Zara. We're going to a place where you'll be safe and accepted. The journey to Verdantia was long but uneventful. Jack spent the time reflecting on the events that had led them here, his bond with Zara and the challenges they had faced. Despite the uncertainty of the future, he was determined to ensure Zara's happiness and safety. When they finally arrived at Verdantia, they were greeted by Dr. Celine and her team. The sanctuary was a lush, vibrant haven, filled with exotic creatures and carefully tended habitats. Welcome to Verdantia, Dr. Celine said, smiling warmly. We've prepared a special area for Zara, where she can live freely and comfortably. We'll take good care of her. Jack followed Dr. Celine as she led them to Zara's new habitat. It was a spacious, forested area, designed to mimic her natural environment. Zara explored her new surroundings with cautious curiosity and Jack felt a sense of relief seeing her in such a beautiful and safe place. Dr. Celine explained the sanctuary's mission and the care they provided for all their residents. We believe in giving these creatures the best possible life, free from fear and harm. Zara will be well cared for here, Jack. You can visit her whenever you like. Jack thanked Dr. Celine and spent the next few days helping Zara adjust to her new home. He built a shelter for her, brought familiar objects from their old home, and spent hours reassuring her with his presence. The sanctuary staff were kind and welcoming, and they took a genuine interest in Zara. Over time, Zara began to form bonds with the staff and other creatures, her gentle nature shining through. One evening, as Jack sat with Zara in her new habitat, he spoke to her softly. This is your home now, Zara. I'll come back to visit as often as I can, but you need to make new friends and be happy here. Zara nuzzled Jack a gesture of understanding and affection. Jack felt a pang of sadness, but knew it was the right decision. The sanctuary on Verdantia offered Zara a peaceful haven, but Jack couldn't shake the feeling of loss. Though he was reassured by Dr. Celine's updates on Zara's well-being, he missed her presence in his daily life. Determined to keep his promise to visit often, 
Jack planned frequent trips to Verdantia, making sure Zara knew she hadn't been abandoned. One evening, as Jack was preparing for another visit, he received a distress signal from Verdantia. Dr. Selena's voice was strained and urgent. Jack, we need your help. There's been an incident. A group of poachers has breached the sanctuary's perimeter, and we fear they might be targeting Zara and other rare creatures. Jack's heart raced. I'll be there as soon as I can, Celine. Stay safe. Jack quickly assembled a team of volunteers from the settlers on Draxia who had grown to appreciate Zara. Among them was Lily's father, Tom, who had become one of Zara's staunch supporters after witnessing her protectiveness firsthand. They boarded Jack's ship and set off for Verdantia, determined to protect Zara and the sanctuary. When they arrived, the scene was chaotic. The poachers had already caused significant damage, and several of the sanctuary's staff were injured. Zara, along with other creatures, had retreated to a dense part of the forest, hiding from the threat. Dr. Selene briefed Jack and his team. The poachers are heavily armed and seem to have specific targets in mind. We need to secure the sanctuary and drive them out before they cause more harm. Jack nodded, steeling himself for the task ahead. We'll split into teams. Some of us will work on securing the perimeter and tending to the injured, while the rest will find and protect the creatures. Jack led the search team, moving quickly through the forest with Tom and the others. They used tracking devices to locate Zara and the other creatures, guiding them to a secure area. Zara recognized Jack immediately, rushing to him with a mix of relief and fear. It's okay, Zara. We're here to help, Jack said, stroking her fur to calm her down. We won't let them hurt you. As night fell, the poachers intensified their efforts, realizing their time was running out. Jack and his team fortified their position, setting up defenses and preparing for a confrontation. The air was tense, filled with the sounds of rustling leaves and distant movement. Dr. Celine approached Jack, her face determined. We've contacted the local authorities, but it will take time for them to arrive. We need to hold off the poachers until then. Jack nodded. We'll do whatever it takes. Zara and the others are counting on us. The first wave of poachers came at dawn, attempting to breach the sanctuary's defenses. Jack and his team fought back with everything they had, using non-lethal methods to incapacitate the attackers. Zara, sensing the danger, stayed close to Jack, her presence a comforting reminder of what they were fighting for. Tom and a few other settlers, skilled in tracking and defense, played a crucial role in repelling the poachers. Their knowledge of the terrain and commitment to protecting Zara and the sanctuary made a significant difference. During a brief lull in the battle, Jack and Dr. Selene strategized. We need to cut off their access points, Jack said. If we can isolate them, we can neutralize the threat more effectively. Selene agreed. I'll coordinate with the remaining staff to secure the perimeter. You focus on protecting the creatures. The battle raged on, with both sides suffering injuries and exhaustion. Despite the odds, Jack's determination never wavered. He fought fiercely, driven by his bond with Zara and the desire to see the sanctuary safe. As the sun began to rise, the sound of approaching sirens signaled the arrival of the authorities. The poachers, realizing they were outnumbered and outmatched, began to retreat. Jack and his team pressed on, capturing those they could and driving the rest away. When the last of the poachers were apprehended, a collective sigh of relief swept through the sanctuary. The authorities took control, securing the area and tending to the wounded. Jack and his team, though battered and bruised, were triumphant. Dr. Selene approached Jack, her expression one of gratitude and admiration. You saved us, Jack. We couldn't have done this without you and your team. Jack shook his head, smiling wearily. We did this together. Zara and the sanctuary mean too much to all of us. Zara nuzzled Jack, her eyes reflecting trust and affection. Jack felt a surge of emotion, knowing that their bond had only grown stronger through this ordeal. As the sanctuary began to recover from the attack, Jack and his team stayed to help rebuild. The settlers from Draxia, now more connected to Zara and the sanctuary than ever, offered their assistance, forging new friendships and alliances. One evening, as Jack sat with Zara in the restored habitat, he reflected on the journey they had taken. We face so much together, Zara. But through it all, we've proven that love, loyalty, and understanding can overcome any obstacle. Zara nuzzled closer, her presence a comforting reminder of their unbreakable bond. Jack knew that no matter what challenges lay ahead, they would face them together, united by the strength of their friendship and the love they shared.
In the weeks following the attack, the sanctuary on Verdantia became a bustling hub of activity. Volunteers from Draxia and beyond poured in to help rebuild and reinforce the sanctuary's defenses. The once fractured settlement on Draxia had come together in support of Zara and the sanctuary's mission, fostering a sense of unity and shared purpose. Jack spent his days working alongside the volunteers, his bond with Zara stronger than ever. The ordeal had shown the settlers and the sanctuary staff the depths of Zara's loyalty and intelligence, gradually dispelling the remaining prejudices. More and more, people began to see Zara for the gentle and protective creature she truly was. One day, as Jack and Zara were helping to construct a new enclosure for some of the sanctuary's other residents, Tom approached them with a broad smile. Jack, we've been talking, and a lot of us from Draxia want to make this a regular thing. Coming here helping out? It feels right. Jack felt a swell of pride and gratitude. That's incredible, Tom. Verdantia could always use more helping hands, and it's great to see how much everyone cares. As the new enclosure neared completion, Dr. Celine gathered everyone for a brief meeting. Thanks to all your hard work, the sanctuary is not only recovering but thriving, she said. We've decided to open up new educational programs and guided tours to share the wonders of Verdantia with visitors from all over the galaxy. And Jack, we'd like you to lead these programs. Jack was taken aback. Me? I'd be honored, Celine. You and Zara have a unique bond that's inspired us all. Dr. Celine explained. Who better to teach others about the importance of understanding and protecting these magnificent creatures? Jack agreed enthusiastically, and soon the new programs were up and running. Visitors from various planets came to Verdantia to learn about the sanctuary's mission and its residents. Jack and Zara became the centerpiece of these programs, their story a powerful testament to the transformative power of empathy and connection. As the educational programs flourished, Jack received an urgent message from Captain Elias his old friend who had helped him find Verdantia. Jack, we have a situation. A rare and endangered species called the Crinlons has been discovered on a remote planet. Poachers are already targeting them. We need your help. Jack knew he couldn't turn his back on another species in need. He discussed the situation with Dr. Celine and the sanctuary team. The Crinlons need protection, and we have the resources and expertise to help. But it's going to be dangerous. Dr. Celine nodded. We'll support you however we can. Zara will be in good hands here, but she would want you to go and help those creatures. Jack prepared for the mission, assembling a team that included Tom and a few trusted volunteers. He also received support from the authorities and other conservation groups, who recognized the urgency of the situation. Before leaving, Jack spent a quiet evening with Zara, explaining the mission. I have to go, Zara. There are other creatures out there who need our help. I'll come back as soon as I can, I promise. Zara nuzzled him, her eyes reflecting understanding and trust. Jack felt a pang of sadness at the thought of leaving her, but knew it was the right thing to do. The journey to the remote planet was long and arduous. When they arrived, they found a landscape teeming with life, but overshadowed by the threat of poachers. The Crinlons were gentle, deer-like creatures with shimmering scales and intricate antlers that made them a prime target for illegal hunters. Jack and his team set up camp and began their work, using their skills and experience to protect the Crinlons. They built secure enclosures, set up surveillance systems, and coordinated with local authorities to patrol the area and deter poachers. The work was challenging and often dangerous. One night, while on patrol, they encountered a group of poachers. A tense standoff ensued, but Jack and his team managed to outmaneuver the poachers, capturing some and driving the rest away. The authorities took over, ensuring the poachers would face justice. Through their efforts, the Crinlon's population began to stabilize. The team worked tirelessly, often risking their own safety, but their dedication paid off. The planet's ecosystem started to recover and the Crinlon's thrived under their protection. After several months, Jack and his team completed their mission. The local authorities and conservation groups took over, ensuring the continued protection of the Crinlon's. Jack felt a deep sense of accomplishment and relief, but he was eager to return to Verdantia and reunite with Zara. When Jack arrived back at the sanctuary, Zara was waiting for him at the gate, her eyes bright with excitement. Jack felt a wave of emotion as he embraced her, feeling the warmth of their bond once more. We did it, Zara, Jack said softly. We helped save another species, just like we promised. And now, we're back where we belong. 
As Jack and Zara resumed their work at the sanctuary, they continued to inspire others with their story. They had faced numerous challenges and dangers, but their unwavering commitment to each other and to the protection of all creatures had made a lasting impact. The sanctuary on Verdantia became a beacon of hope and conservation, attracting visitors and volunteers from across the galaxy. Jack and Zara's bond, forged through adversity and strengthened by love, remained at the heart of their mission. Together they showed the universe that understanding, empathy, and dedication could overcome any obstacle, creating a brighter future for all living beings. With the mission to protect the Krinlon successfully completed, Jack and his team returned to Verdantia, bringing with them a renewed sense of purpose. The sanctuary welcomed them back with open arms, and Jack was eager to resume his work with Zara. The sanctuary had undergone significant improvements during Jack's absence. The educational programs he had initiated were thriving, attracting more visitors and volunteers than ever before. Dr. Celine and her team had also expanded the sanctuary's reach, forming alliances with other conservation groups across the galaxy. One evening, Dr. Celine called a meeting with Jack and the key members of the sanctuary. Jack, your efforts and the story of your bond with Zara have inspired many. We've been approached by several organizations that want to partner with us to create a network of sanctuaries across the galaxy. They believe that we can replicate our success here on Verdantia and other places. Jack felt a surge of excitement and pride. That's incredible, Celine. It's a chance to make an even bigger impact. Dr. Celine nodded. It is, and we want you to lead this initiative. Your experience and dedication make you the perfect person for this role. Jack was honored by the offer. He looked at Zara, who was by his side as always, and felt a deep sense of purpose. I'd be honored to lead this initiative. Together, we can create safe havens for creatures everywhere. The next few months were a whirlwind of activity. Jack and Zara traveled to various planets, meeting with local leaders and conservationists to establish new sanctuaries. They shared their knowledge and experiences, helping to set up programs and facilities that mirrored the success of Verdantia. Each new sanctuary brought its own challenges, but Jack and Zara faced them with determination and resilience. They encountered diverse species and ecosystems, learning and adapting as they went. Their journey was filled with moments of awe and wonder, as well as the satisfaction of knowing they were making a real difference. Years passed, and the network of sanctuaries flourished. Jack and Zara had become legends in the conservation community their story a powerful testament to the transformative power of love, empathy, and dedication. The network they had helped to build protected countless species, preserving the beauty and diversity of the galaxy for future generations. One evening, as Jack and Zara sat together on a hill overlooking the sanctuary on Verdantia, Jack reflected on their journey. The sky was painted with the vibrant hues of a setting sun and the sounds of the sanctuary filled the air. We've come so far, Zara. Jack said softly. We face so many challenges and overcome them all. And look at what we've built together. This sanctuary and all the others, they're our legacy. Zara nuzzled Jack's hand, her eyes filled with understanding and affection. Jack felt a deep sense of contentment and fulfillment, knowing that their efforts had made a lasting impact. As the years went by, Jack continued to lead the network of sanctuaries, always with Zara by his side. They mentored new generations of conservationists, sharing their knowledge and passion for protecting the galaxy's creatures. Their bond remained as strong as ever, a symbol of the enduring power of love and friendship. One day, as Jack and Zara walked through the sanctuary, they were approached by a group of young volunteers. One of them, a bright-eyed girl named Alina, spoke up. Mr. Jack, we've heard so much about you and Zara. We want to help continue your work. Can you teach us? Jack smiled, feeling a deep sense of pride and hope. Of course, Alina, we'd be happy to. The work we do is important, and it's up to all of us to ensure it continues. As Jack and Zara shared their knowledge with the eager young volunteers, he realized that their legacy would live on through these new generations. The sanctuaries they had built would continue to protect and nurture the galaxy's creatures, guided by the principles of compassion and understanding that had always driven their work. In the twilight of his years, Jack looked back on his life with gratitude and joy. He had found his purpose and had been blessed with a bond that transcended all boundaries. Zara had been his companion, protector, and friend, and together they had created a brighter future for countless beings.
As the sun set over Verdantia, casting a golden glow over the sanctuary, Jack and Zara stood together knowing that their journey was far from over. They had created a legacy of love and protection, one that would endure for generations to come. And as long as they were together, there was nothing they couldn't achieve.